The U.S. posted strong economic numbers last week, prompting the Fed to reassess the possibility of a recession. But will they continue to raise rates this year? And how would the BSP react to the new data that just came in? Let's discuss. I'm Dan Slim and welcome to another episode of Monday Market Outlook. So in reaction to the U.S. Fed raising rates to its highest level in 22 years, the BSP is again in the spotlight as economists weigh in on the BSP's options. Like we said last week, as long as the peso does not fall to 60 versus the dollar, the BSP can still afford to pause rates. Furthermore, as long as inflation trends lower, we could keep the pause. Remember that the primary goal of the BSP is to tame inflation. So even as we talk about raising rates to defend the peso, remember that the Philippines is primarily an import-driven economy. And as such, a depreciation in the peso means higher prices. Now, looking at the inflation numbers, we are currently at 5.4%. And yes, while it has been trending lower, the war on inflation is far from over, which is why most countries have kept their interest rates elevated or even has plans to raise rates further. What's troubling here is that commodity prices have recently been on an uptrend. Now, if we look at rice prices, they have steadily climbed to its highest levels in two years, almost reaching pandemic levels here. The Philippines is the second top importer of rice and with an estimated 13% of our rice consumption being imported and we mainly import our rice from Vietnam. Crude oil prices have also pushed past $80 per barrel from a low of $65. So get ready for more oil price hikes this August 1. And after the collapse of the Black Sea deal, wheat prices are also surging. Now, remember that wheat is the main ingredients for a lot of our bread products. Now, there are two types of inflation. One is cost push and demand pull. And inflation right now is caused by both factors. The reopening of the economy is causing demand to go up, pulling prices up. So demand pull, but input costs are also rising, pushing prices up. So that's cost push. Now, the BSP in raising interest rates is meant to address demand pull as central banks siphon money away from the economy, slowing down economic growth, lessening demand. How do we address cost push inflation? This can't be addressed by monetary tightening. Inflation report will come out on August 4 and investors may be on a wait and see mode as we await these numbers. In the meantime, some good news as IMF has raised its growth outlook for the Philippines to 6.2% from its previous forecast of 6%. However, inflation forecast of the IMF are still at higher levels compared to the BSP targets. Now, the BSP is targeting 5.4, IMF is expecting 5.5, 2.9 for the BSP and 3.2 estimated by the IMF. So again, the war on inflation is still not over. And also as government revenues are also growing, hitting 1.9 trillion in the first half, growing 7.7%. We may see increased infrastructure spending in the next few years, which will continue to spur economic growth in the Philippines. Now on to the market action. Let's take a look at the PSEI charts. We have the PSEI ending Friday with a strong sell-off but traded generally higher during last week, hitting 6,700 resistance. Now, for now, the index is trading along this zone here, 6,740 and 6,370. For this week, the PSEI could either trend higher, challenging 6,750 or trade along this range as we await inflation numbers. But for now, the 6,500 support level here is to be a strong level and will most likely hold. And as we digest what we've said about interest rates and rate hikes, remember that the main beneficiary of high interest rates are banks. And as rates remain elevated and with even the possibility of further rate hikes, our banking stocks will continue to perform well and will continue to benefit from higher interest rates. Conversely, as we are monitoring real estate stocks, 
higher interest rates will continue to hurt this particular sector. So while we are speculating that this may be the bottom for real estate stocks, you still have to be cautious as there might still be some downside risk to the real estate sector. Now looking at ARIT here, it is down to 33. An interesting level would be 32 where the yields are at 6.5. So this could be a good pickup point. So we have a triple rebalancing next month as the FTSE, MSCI and the PSEI rebalancing goes into play. The word on the street converge out of the index, Bloomberg in, but with the MPI delisting, people are speculating which stock will replace MPI in the index. Some say it's going to be CNPF. I've also heard Union Banks mention. So what are your guesses? Comment on the section below if you have any idea. And so we'll see. Now on to the global market. We have economic numbers coming in last week. Very strong. Manufacturing numbers still expanding except for the U.S. manufacturing PMI which is 49 below 50 but look at this it's higher than the expected 46.4. Consumer confidence trending higher 110, 111 now 117. New home sales coming in lower than expected. GDP a surprise number 2.4 as compared to the 1.8% expected. Initial jobless claims coming in lower than expected, but the most important indicator for the Fed, the, their favorite, core PCE price index coming in at 4.1, lower than 4.2. Overall, we have a strong economy here. Inflation is going down, which is prompting the Fed again to reassess the possibility of a recession. Last week, as the Fed raised rates by another 25 basis points as expected, to its highest levels in 22 years, the economy has remained strong, prompting the question, could we still see a recession? Because not only is the economy strong, the Dow Jones also ended its winning streak since 2017. Again, fueling the question that there may be no recession in sight. Now, if we look at past win streaks of the Dow Jones, while the sample size is a bit questionable, we see past win streaks of the Dow Jones generally ending positive one month, three months, and even one year after. So we'll see. Now a quick look at the US inflation numbers. It's currently down to 3%. We are seeing inflation go down consistently, but strong economic numbers is keeping rates up as central banks are being careful not to cut rates too soon and risk inflation going back up. Should the Fed pause rates and let the economic numbers catch up to its effects and after all inflation is already at manageable levels and as to the question of a recession we go back to our recession indicators do we see a decline in gdp do we see a decline in real income do we see a rise in unemployment do we see industrial production stagnating do we see a decline in consumer spending because if we look at the numbers here gdp might have been declining for the past months but recently it has started to climb up personal income it's not declining we have unemployment rate always hitting 3.7 then going down 3.7 going down the latest unemployment rate will come out this friday is it going to be lower than 3.6 we have the pmi numbers still above 50 from 46 it's now at 49 is it trending lower not really we have consumer confidence at two-year highs so we are not seeing any signs of a recession and the s p 500 is liking that situation as we see the s p 500 rally strongly last friday to end the week at 4583 now the consolidation pattern here could move the markets to its next resistance at 4,636. Now zooming out to the weekly chart, we can see that this is the third straight weekly gain for the S&P 500 and there's still no signs of a reversal. And if we compare that to last March where the S&P 500 hit the highs and rejected it, we can see the S&P 500 with a green candle above 4,550. Going back to the daily charts and turning on the moving averages, we could see the market do a mean reversion this week. Remember that we mentioned that price action tends to revert to the moving averages either through a pullback in price 
or a consolidation bringing the moving averages closer to the price action. We continue earning season. We currently have 80% of the companies in the S&P 500 reporting above expectations, 4% in line with expectations, and only 16% reporting below estimates. And even if you look at the information technology sector here, there are still no companies reporting below expectations. Again, Where's the recession here? We look forward to earnings from Amazon and Apple as we wrap up 80% of the S&P 500 companies. Now, manufacturing and employment numbers will also come out. And as long as the no recession narrative continues to be supported by strong economic numbers, we may see the S&P 500 rally further. So that's it for this week. I hope you found our episode useful. Please like this video subscribe to the channel and again good luck on your trades manage your risk accordingly and i'll see you again next week bye, -bye.